Here's what really troubles me. Unfortunately, these acts and attacks invoke a history of intimidation and violence against Jewish communities. And when these events take place alongside a documented increase in hate crimes and a spike in anti-Semitic incidents, the desecration of Jewish cemeteries, swastikas painted on park bridges and schools, the defacement of Jewish community centers and synagogues, including right here in New Jersey. We are reminded yet again that anti-Semitism is never dead, but dormant, and all too easily awoken by those <coughs> who stoke hate. Indeed, CNN reports in the days before attacking the synagogue, the shooter posted on social media that he has the wonderful Jewish American refugee organization that resettles refugees was responsible, according to the shooter, for organizing a caravan of Central American invaders. My friends, refugees are not invaders. And in the United States of America, seeking asylum is not illegal. Words matter. History teaches us that words matter. And when we don't face up to those who would use words in hateful ways, we face the consequences. We have seen some of the darkest chapters of history written because no one stood up to the words. Rhetoric has the power to bring people together or to drive them apart. Power to appeal to our better angels or to fan the flames of hatred and violence. Unfortunately, the rise of nationalism and anti-Semitism and its hatred transcends our borders. In times like these, it's never mattered more that we stand up for our democratic values and for our democratic allies, including the state of Israel. Whether it's efforts by nations to unfairly single out Israel, the United Nations, or the misguided BDS movement seeking to isolate Israel economically and academically, I will never hesitate to call out anti-Semitism where I see it. That's why when I have leaders of countries in the world who come to visit me, as the senior Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, if they, in fact, are from a country where there is a rising tide of anti-Semitism or a growing BDS movement, I challenge them and say, what are you doing about speaking about anti-Semitism in your country? How are you fighting? <laughs> To this community last year when a wave of bomb threats targeted synagogues and community centers across our state. Together, we organized an event that brought uh, a good part of the state's Jewish community together and others of good faith to stand up to anti-Semitism. We stood up for religious freedom, and with your help, I led the fight in the Senate and succeeded to double the funding for nonprofit security grants, a cause I intend to continue to champion in the wake of this weekend's horrific tragedy. Places of worship should be places that are safe. If a place of worship is not safe in our country, there is no place that is safe in our country. Places of worship like this synagogue, places of worship like this synagogue that we stand together in this evening, or the one in Pittsburgh where families gathered to pray on the Sabbath, and celebrate the birth and birth of a young son should be places in which we are safe and secure. In this country, we enjoy and must protect our freedom to gather and express our faith, regardless to which God we play. No one can take that right away. I refuse to be intimidated. I refuse to live in fear. I refuse to let the heinous act of one man deter the absolute right of this community or any community who gathers in peace and love. I stand with you tonight, as I always have and always will. Together, we'll fight the forces of hate and fear and never back down. We'll bring the forces of light, and they will shut out the forces of darkness. As we remember and pray for the lies tragically taken too soon, in the spirit of Tikkun Olam, let's not forget that it is our collective responsibility to make this world a better place and tomorrow a brighter day. Shalom. Thank you very much.